Hello, everybody. This is the McGill pre-registration orientation information session for students who have been admitted in the Faculty of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences uh, on the McDonald campus. So we're just gonna establish some ground rules. Uh, please keep yourself on mute. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat, but we will be answering them uh, at the end of our presentation, because chances are we may be answering your question as we go through this presentation. Uh, along with me is my co-host, uh, Jennifer Innes, uh, who will be managing the chat. Um, as well, we have uh, Dr. Valerie Orsat. She's the Associate Dean of Student Affairs. Um, Alexa Brody from my office as well. She's a recruiter. You might have met her already. Uh, and uh, Dr. Alice Trustes, Director of the Freshman Program, is uh, joining us right now, but she will be available uh, to speak with you uh, at the end uh, during the breakout session uh, period. These are a list of the uh, topics that we will be covering in more detail. So there is quite a bit of material, but this session is being recorded and it will be available on our website in a few days. Uh, and like I said, we may be answering some of your questions on these topics as we get through all of this. The first document is the essential guide for new students. This is what it looks like. You should have received it in the mail. They've been going out in the mail for some time. Uh, it's also available online. Our website is, uh, or the PDF uh, link is advertised at the bottom. Um, so there's a lot of useful information in this booklet. Uh, you should be going through most of it. Um, a lot of that information will apply. Uh, I'll highlight some of the uh, information in that guide that's going to be uh, coming up shortly for you that you really need to keep in mind. Uh, we'll start off with the registration dates that's opening next week. Uh, for the Quebec CJEP students, it's June the 8th and then the week after. We have opening dates for both uh, um, high school students coming in with advanced standing and the regular freshman students. Uh, keep in mind that once registration opens, you are able to register for both your fall and winter term courses. And I suggest you do register for your winter courses and secure yourself a spot in the courses that you will need. Uh, this year, uh, classes begin on August the 31st. Um, you will continue or be able to continue to add and drop courses for the fall semester until the 13th of September. Um, then you have the opportunity to withdraw uh, from the course with a fee refund until the 20th of September and uh, with no fee refund until October 25th. Sometimes you do that because you're finding the course's load is too heavy or that you're not doing well in a course and you might be advised to try again later and you can take a withdrawal rather than uh, having it affect your grade point average. Uh, you'll have similar withdrawal deadlines in the winter. All of these dates you can find at the back of the guide. So it's uh, in a chronological order. So definitely look through those dates that are going to be important for you. Um, you will be needing a McGill ID card sooner rather than later. Uh, the ID card will give you access to the library, to athletics, uh, and just as important to your final exams and other areas of the university that need card access, including residences. Uh, you will be able to get your McGill ID card 24 hours after you've registered for at least one course. Uh, you will need your McGill ID number and a go government photo issued ID in order to pick up your McGill ID card. We normally take your picture on the spot, uh, but uh, you will have the opportunity to um, upload your photo beforehand if you'd like that uh, instead. Um, just, it is on our website, just look up McGill ID card and the information on how to upload your, your uh, photo ID uh, will be there. Then you just come in, present your photo, uh, government photo ID, and we will be able to just print out your ID card for you. Frosh week will be from August the 22nd to August the 30th. Um, this will be a variety of information sessions as well as activities uh, organized, <clears throat> sorry, from the McGill Student uh, Society, um, the MCSS, the activities so that you guys have a chance to get to know each other. Uh, and the information sessions is given by McGill. Uh, 
uh, that will provide you with uh, useful information that you will need. Um, the schedule will become available at the beginning of August and registration will be required for most of those activities. There are some official documents that we will need from you. Uh, the first is the legal documents. If you're an international student, you will need your study permit and CAQ and McGill needs proof that you have that, um, th those documents. Um, there are other documents that we uh, may need from you. If you're graduating from high school, we may need proof of your graduation, your final marks. Uh, there is a link available that you can check to see if we need you to do anything. If you're a Quebec CJEP student, you don't need us uh, to send us anything. We get your final transcript automatically and electronically. So there's nothing for you to do. Um, the, a lot of these legal documents, uh, especially at the top there, uh, they do affect the tuition rate you will be charged. So definitely get those documents in. And for sure, if you don't get those documents into us uh, normally within your first time, eventually you will get blocked from being able to make changes to your record. Uh, so definitely get those documents in. We have advisors and we have two different types of advisors. There are academic advisors, and these are the ones that you will be meeting at the end of the session in the breakout session rooms. They will help you uh, with uh, specific questions about your program, your courses, uh, selecting your courses, you know, if you're interested in doing a minor, uh, if you're wanting to do an honors, planning your schedule over the next three or four years. So your academic advisor is the one that will help you uh, get through those questions. Uh, we also have a general faculty advisor uh, in the Student Affairs Office. It was more of a general advisor with uh, issues surrounding the registration problems, transfer of credits, if you're interested in studying abroad. Um, so there are two different roles that are played um, and, and you're accessible to both of these advisors. They just play slightly different roles. Get on to grades and academic standing and it's just a question of understanding what this means. At McGill, in order to be a full-time student, you need to be registered for at least 12 credits. Um, in most cases, courses are three credits. Some of them are four, um, but typically a 12 credit load is four courses. A normal course load is 15 credits, uh, which will be five courses. Um, some course programs are very specific and you may be um, you know, taking 15 or sometimes even 16 credits, especially dietetics and maybe engineering. Uh, where the, it's just laid out in that way. Uh, students that are transitioning into university, you always have the flexibility of taking four courses instead of five, still staying a full-time student and just giving yourself the opportunity to transition more easily. Um, and if you do that, if it's an elective course, you can always pick that up in the summer to make sure that you can still graduate in the same amount of time. If we look at our grade point average, we work on a 4.0 scale, a 4.0 being an A grade. Uh, the absolute minimum uh, grade a GPA required is a 2.0 to be in good or what we call satisfactory standing. A 2.0 equates to a C average. A 3.0, which is a B average, is required for students in dietetics in order to be eligible to do your stages. Those are like your internships that are built into your program. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, the minimum grades, a passing grade is a C grade, which is 55%. That is required. Um, that is a passing grade for required courses and complementary courses. A D grade is a conditional pass. It can only be used for elective courses. You have access to your McGill transcript uh, directly on Minerva. You're all going to become very, very familiar with Minerva. This is where everything takes place, including registration. Um, and a slew of other uh, functionalities. In there, you will be able to see your own McGill transcript. It's an unofficial, unofficial advising transcript. And this is just a sample, uh, just to be able to see what it looks like. Um, it'll show where you're coming from. It'll show what degree you're in and how many credits are required. If you have any advanced standing, it'll appear on this side. The term, this kind of pattern will be this, layout will be repeated on each term. So it'll show you the term, the courses you're registered in. Um, the headings are slightly off, but basically this is the student's individual grades. At the far end is the class average if it's been calculated. 
And then your GPAs show here at the bottom. One is your term GPA, which is specific to that particular term, and a cumulative GPA, which is obviously cumulative and will keep uh, continuing to be cumulative over the course of the next few semesters. Any advanced uh, standing or transfer credits are indicated here. And the same thing, that pattern at the bottom will repeat itself after each semester. Um, what you're not seeing right here is that at the very top, there will be your nominative information, your uh, name, McGill ID number, your McGill email address, which is the official way that we communicate with you. And as you register, we will assign your academic advisor, which will end up showing up right in that section right below that information. And then you'll know who your advisor is. However, we have given you a link in the essential guide where you can see who your academic advisor is if you need to communicate with them um, anytime soon. When we look at courses at McGill, uh, you'll get familiar with them very quickly. Uh, this is a sample of a course, NUTR 207. The letters representing the subject matter, in this case, it's nutrition. 207 being the course number with the first number being the important part. Uh, it, it signifies the level. Um, so we have uh, 100, 100 level, 200, all the way up to 700 level courses. Uh, the ones you're going to be working with the most are from 100 to 400. The 100 level courses are typically for freshman students, uh, U0. Uh, Quebec CJEP students will come in uh, as a U1 student and typically start registering for 200 level courses. And as you progress uh, forward, you get into your 300 and 400 level courses, which tend to be more advanced. You will have access to 500 level courses, but not Right now, uh, if you do take 500 level courses, it tends to be towards uh, your, in your senior year. Um, and you definitely don't want to be taking a 500 level course in your first year. Um, 600, 700 level courses are uh, graduate level uh, course numbers. Not, you won't, can't access them, but you're aware of them. There are some full year courses, meaning that it's not one semester, but two semesters and they would be signified with uh, this kind of a D1, D2, or N1, N2, depending on whether it's consecutive or non-consecutive terms. Some of the courses, especially, um, well, some of the advanced ones, but even some of the 200 level ones, they will have prerequisites or co-requisites, and sometimes that will be enforced when you're registering. Uh, and you can get a registration error uh, it usually means you're missing the prerequisite or the system is not recognizing that you're getting that you have the prerequisite. For any Quebec CJEP student coming in who has who have taken organic chemistry, which is a co-requisite to biochemistry, uh, we have already issued you a permit allowing you to register for Biochem 1 without any problems. If you do have a problem, just email us. Um, sometimes this comes as an issue if you're taking organic chemistry in your final term uh, in CJEP. The difference between required complementary and elective courses in your program, uh, you will find a list of required courses. And that means what it is. They are required. You have to take each and every one of those courses. A complementary course is a course related to your program. Normally, you will have a list of you know, maybe 10 courses and you need to choose five of those courses. So you have some flexibility in choosing the course that you would be wanting to take. An elective course <clears throat> is a free choice. Uh, electives can be courses that are related to your program or they can be completely unrelated. If you have an interest in language courses or art history or you can take those courses. Um, and they would count as electives towards your program. Um, depending on the program you're in will depend on how many or if you have any electives. Uh, so you definitely have to look at the requirements in your program for that. Be sure to use the Visual Schedule Builder. It is a tool to help uh, you make your schedule. It finds the most optimal schedule that works, uh, you know, that would work for you. It, it does not register you in the courses. It just gives you samples of what your schedule could look like if you put a set of courses in. It will uh, show you what uh, what your schedule would look like on a Monday to Friday uh, basis. There's the satisfactory and unsatisfactory uh, option, which we call the SU option. Um, this is an opportunity to take a course um, that 
potentially might be of interest to you, but you, you don't want it to affect your GPA. Um, so if you had an interest in taking a pharmacology course that you might think might be a bit tough, um, you can select the SU option if you're using it as an elective. And if you pass the course, you earn the credits, uh, pass would be a C grade or better. And if you don't do well, if it's a D or lower, then you get a U, but either way, neither grades affect your grade point average. Uh, this option is not available to freshman students in the freshman program. That is because all of your courses are required and you cannot or should not use that option on any required or complementary course. Otherwise, that course cannot be used uh, or can only be used as an elective. So keep that in mind. We are connected to the downtown campus and some students uh, will want to or need to take courses on the downtown campus. So first thing is keep, the, keep it in mind, you need to be using the shuttle bus. Uh, there is a schedule available and you need to allow travel time to get between the two campuses. Uh, students in the environment major are usually the ones that uh, make most use of this, uh, where their courses um, needed in their program are definitely on both campuses. If you are a freshman student, most freshman students take all of their courses in this faculty and on this campus. But if you do want to take one or two courses downtown, that is permitted. You can take up to eight credits, which means two courses. The students in the BSc Agriculture Environmental Sciences degree are expected to complete two thirds of their program in this faculty. But that still leaves one third of your program that is open uh, to you if you wish to uh, take some of your courses downtown. But again, the commute, the travel time is important. You have to leave at least an hour, at least, uh, and being careful if you're traveling during rush hour. For the bioresource engineering students in your U2 winter semester, you will take a full semester downtown in the Faculty of Engineering. That's how your program is set up. Um, so that, that'll be your downtown semester. Choosing a major, a lot of the freshman students, or in this case, only for the freshman students, uh, you will be getting um, uh, introduced to a lot of our programs and degrees uh, during your freshman seminar course. And at the, uh, towards the end of your freshman year, <clears throat> you will have the opportunity to actually uh, confirm the major that you wanna move into. Um, students and the other degrees just naturally progress to U1, but sometimes students actually do want to transfer between degrees, and that's also um, an option. You can also explore all of our programs at the website that's uh, showing on this slide. You'll have the opportunity to consider minors, honors, and specializations. A lot of this does not have to be done right now. Uh, a minor is, um, you know, if you're interested in not simply taking a variety of different electives, but having more of a focus, um, there is um, a minor approval form that would be completed. But again, you're not doing this until the end of your U1 or beginning of U2 year. Uh, planning is good, especially if that minor is in another faculty and would require you to take courses downtown. Uh, honors are for students who are staying within the same major and in their final year want to have that honors focus so they're doing some research. There are requirements to get into the honors program and there are also requirements in order to graduate from the honors program. Uh, this is something you would discuss with your academic advisor. Uh, for most of the students, um, by the end of their U1 year, if you are in the BSc Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, you will require a specialization. Uh, if you've decided already, great, you can change your mind if you realize you're not, that's not the specialization you want, or if you haven't selected it, you'll have the opportunity to talk to your academic advisor about it. Uh, some of the other programs will have uh, domains or options. They all pretty much mean the same thing. It's a focus of uh, credits within your program uh, that just adds to the major that you're in. Uh, the only ones that really don't choose anything is the, the, uh, the bioresource engineering program. They do have streams that they can focus on, but it's not declared um, on your transcript in any way. It's just a selection of courses. We do always get students who want to take advantage of being able to study abroad. Uh, the students that are coming in this year as a U1 student, 
uh, would be applying by January the 15th if they want to be uh, considering going on exchange in the 2023-2024 academic year. Normally students uh, go on exchange for one semester. Uh, we will have an information session in November. We will normally record it and make it available on our website. And then we will have Q, uh, Q and A sessions where we can answer your questions. The uh, exchanges are official partnerships that McGill has with other universities around the world. We have over 150 agreements. So you have plenty to choose from and this really facilitates the um, a student wanting to go on exchange. The independent study away is really on your own. It means that McGill does not have an established partnership. It means you go to that university as a visiting student and pay their tuition. We normally really see that in the summer uh, as there is no exchange in the summertime. Most students take advantage of an exchange if that's what they really wanna be doing. Um, this is aside from field studies and internships uh, or students wanting to take a course at another university within Quebec, which we call the IUT. And then there's the uh, Je Explorer program, which is uh, normally offered in the summer. Keep in mind that there's a maximum number of credits that can be transferred. So the most of your programs should be done at McGill or most of your courses should be done at McGill. We have a student affairs office and we have a student services office and many times students don't necessarily understand the difference. So uh, here is a list of the different uh, items that fall under each of these offices. The easiest way to keep it in mind is that student affairs has everything to do with your academic record and student services has nothing to do with your academic record. Um, so student affairs, uh, which is where I'm located, um, this is where we handle everything with registration, your transfer of credits, graduation, the final exams, ID cards, and then student services. You'll have a student wellness hub where we have access to a nurse, a doctor, counselor. Uh, there's the office for your students with disabilities, financial aid. Eventually, you may be looking at career planning um, or international student advising if you have uh, issues with your study permit. Uh, those are the kinds of services that you will be able to get from them. Here's just some information on where to find us. Uh, so we're both on the same campus, right? We're both at, always at McDonald campus and we're just uh, a building away from each other, very accessible. Uh, the information's all there. A lot of student services uh, is done by appointment, so make sure you take a look at their website. There are two uh, mandatory online courses. Uh, one of them is the It Takes All of Us. It is an online sexual violence education program that everybody, including staff, had to go through. Um, so make sure that you get to that before November. There's also an academic integrity course. Uh, this is an explanation of what cheating and plagiarism is so that you avoid that and don't find any, get yourself into any kind of trouble. Um, that you can find at Minerva. Both of these have to be completed within your first term uh, and failure to complete it will result in blocking your registration in the future. So I'm gonna just make sure you get that done sooner rather than later. We get into tuition fees and in-course scholarships. As you add and drop courses, your uh, statement will get adjusted. There is an account summary by term available on Minerva that you can look at. Uh, but at the beginning of every month, there's a billing cycle. You will be billed. Uh, the bill comes by email, so it's all by e-bill. Um, and it will show you the due date that uh, that payment has to be made. On Minerva directly is where you can see your account summary. There's an account summary, account summary by term. And as you add and drop, those fees adjust themselves. So you can take a look there. Uh, Keep in mind, and not that this is applicable right now, but in order for you to be considered for in-course scholarships after you've completed a full year of studies, you need to be registered for at least 27 graded credits in the fall and winter terms. Uh, graded credits meaning you cannot use the SU option on any of these 27 credits. You are automatically considered if you meet the credit requirement and if you have the GPA. Uh, the GPA is typically the top 10% or the Dean's Honor List, sometimes even a little bit below that uh, as we have some very specific types of scholarships. 
Um, you do not need to apply, although uh, student athletes can self-identify, and there are a couple of other very particular types of scholarships that we ask students to uh, self-identify. Um, one of them is in water resources management, and there's another one, but we will be emailing you that information, um, usually in the winter term, to let you know that uh, you can self-identify for those particular ones, but otherwise you will be automatically considered the following summer. French at McGill, if you are a Francophone student coming to McGill, there, is, uh, there are resources available to you, which you can look at that link that's advertised. Uh, and you uh, always have the opportunity to complete your coursework in French, uh, papers, uh, essays, um, and final exams or any type of exam. In fact, you can answer in French. The question uh, or the exam itself will be in English, but you can respond in French if that helps you uh, in any way. There is parking at McDonald campus. Please be sure to check the website. Uh, there are par parking passes available for students, but they are limited. Uh, and there are parking, uh, parking passes that can be purchased just for the day or half day. So just be sure to check their information and find out uh, how to get a parking pass if you plan to drive and park on campus. Uh, students staying in residences, I believe, uh, can also get the parking permit. And uh, that's um, a little bit different, but that information will be on the website as well. That's the end of our presentation, and we will now be able to take some of your questions. So I'll let